what we're going to be looking at on these last few slides is if you were titrating and you went past that equivalence point. So you went past the light pink and you went into the super mega dark magenta fuchsia bright 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 pink color. Um, what's going on there and how does that correlate to the graph that you've seen on the last few slides? So if you go past your equivalence point, there isn't any acid left in the flask for your base to react with. Your pH meter then would be determining the pH based on that excess base only. Uh, so if 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide are needed to reach that equivalence point, we're going to look at three different scenarios. Let's say you overshot that uh, equivalence point by one milliliter, so you put in 26 instead of the required 25. What about scenario two? What if you accidentally put in 10 milliliters too much? How about if you put in 20 milliliters too much? So if you've gone past the equivalence point, the, what your pH is based off of there is that excess hydroxide. So we need to figure out how many moles of excess hydroxide have been added. We need to figure out the volume of the solution. From the moles and the volume, we could get the molarity, the pOH, and then the pH. So let's look at scenario one, where you just overshoot that uh, end point, excuse me, the equivalence point. You overshoot the equivalence point by one extra milliliter. You just went a little bit too far. So first we have to figure out the moles of extra hydroxide ions that are floating around there in solution. So if you have one milliliter of extra and you know its molarity, then you know how many moles of hydroxide you have. You could take those moles of extra hydroxide that you have and divide it by the total volume of the solution. So you had your 25 milliliters of HCl that were originally in the flask. You've added 26 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So your total volume now is 51 milliliters. You can divide those milliliters, or excuse me, the moles by the volume, and then you'd have the molarity of your hydroxide. If you take the negative log of that hydroxide ion concentration, you could get the pOH and therefore the pH by subtracting it from 14. This is a huge jump in pH with the addition of just one extra milliliter of sodium hydroxide. It went from a pH of 7 at the equivalence point to a pH of 11.292, an over 4 point jump in pH with just one extra milliliter of sodium hydroxide. That's why it's so easy to go from that light pink to dark pink as you titrate. What about scenario number two, where we accidentally add in 10 extra milliliters of sodium hydroxide? So we have 60 milliliters of solution total now. The process is the same. We overshot that endpoint by 10 milliliters. The equivalence point was supposed to happen at 25. We put in 35. So 10 extra milliliters convert that into moles, divide those moles by your new total volume, and you'd have the molarity of your hydroxide ion. That's the molarity of the excess past the equivalence point molarity. Take the negative log of that number, that'll give you the pOH that you could subtract from 14 to get the pH. This time it's not a huge jump in pH. From scenario number one, where we overshot by one milliliter, to this scenario, overshooting by a total of 10. So between scenario one and scenario two, there's an extra nine milliliters here. But our pH only went up about one. And in the previous scenario, when we compared the equivalence point to overshooting by one milliliter, the pH jumped by over four points. This time, even though we did nine extra milliliters between our two scenarios there, our pH only went up a point. Or what if we have scenario three? What if we added in 20 milliliters of extra base? Same process, convert those milliliters to moles using the molarity of the base. Take those moles, divide them by the total volume of solution, get your molarity, 
take the negative log, which will give you the pOH and therefore the pH. When you compare scenario 2 to scenario 3, we've added 10 extra milliliters this time, and now the pH hardly jumped at all. Now, from the last scenario to this one, it only went up by about 0.2. So this helps explain that last part of the graph. The pH starts to level out there at the end. Yes, you're adding more sodium hydroxide, so your moles number is getting bigger, but the total volume of your solution is also getting proportionally bigger. And so that when you're taking the molarity of the hydroxide, it's not really changing too much there at the end and that's why your pH kind of levels out there at the end of that graph. So if you had done your titration graph in class, it would have looked something like this curve that you see here. So what about if you're titrating weak acids with strong bases, strong acids with weak bases, or a weak-weak combination? Then what? What happens to the graph then? Well, the general shape of the graph stays fairly consistent, but the pH at the equivalence point might not be 7. The pH at the equivalence point is determined by the ions present in solution at that equivalence point. That's all that math we were doing before spring break. So while the shape of the graph is pretty consistent, it, the numbers are going to shift depending on where that equivalence point is going to be before or after 7. So what you guys are going to look at in order to answer some questions about this lab are it's going to give you these four graphs uh, where you're going to just look at the graphs themselves and see what the pHs are uh, at, what the, at the equivalence point by looking at the graphs. And it'll ask you some questions on there to help explain why the pHs are what they are. Good luck.